Welcome back, welcome back. Glad you all can make it back. Not only to hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. Thank you, my Father. For any and all that woke up this morning, give Father God thanks, give him honor, give him praise, give him glory because he woke you up. You didn't wake up on your own. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of the Lord. And let us go right into prayer. Hallelujah. And Father God loves you more. Let us go right into prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, we come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. We say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for you being who you are, who you are to us, for us, and in us. And we say thank you, my Father. And we cry out, Abba! Glory be to God, Father God. We love you. We love you because you first loved us. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belongs to you and only you, Father God. And we love you with an everlasting love and will never forsake thee. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Father God, we thank you for waking us up this morning. To another glorious day that you made, we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let us all be content where we are. Let us be grateful and thankful to the Father for all that he do have done and will do. Thank you, Father, for waking us up. You didn't have to do that. We earn nothing, absolutely nothing. We're so very grateful and thankful, Lord God. We're so very grateful and thankful. I know. We're to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let us all strive for holiness. Holiness only because without it, no man is going to get into the kingdom of heaven and no man is going to see God. Holiness only. That's the only thing that matters. Let us all be on one accord and that is holiness. And that includes the, that's the brethren and the saints. May they all be on one accord. Let us not be striving, with one, striving against one another. Let us all stand upright together. We're all a piece of the puzzle. Whether we know it or not. We're all a part of the kingdom. We're all here on purpose. Let us serve our purpose. Whatever that purpose may be. Let us not be envy or jealous of the next man. We don't have a reason to do that. Father God is a loving God. He's full of grace and mercy and he loves us all. He loves us all. He doesn't know respect of persons and neither should you. Stop worrying about what people say. Stop worrying about what people are doing. Do your part. Hallelujah. Try to save souls to Christ Jesus. Do your try, do your part, excuse me, Lord, and try to make disciples of men. Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask that you open the hearts and minds of any and all. They will hear the, they will hear the word, Lord God. Not only hear the word, but they will be doers of the word, Lord God. Be doers of the word. May we all strive for holiness. Lord God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that you pray for us, Father God. Please pray for us that our faith don't fail us, Lord God. Father God, help us to stand upright in all that we say and do. Let us be a reflection of you. And that is seen and unseen. Seen and unseen. Let us stand upright. Let us walk in that path of righteousness for ye name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. For thou art with us. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us. Thou preparest a table before us in the presence of thine enemies. Thou anoint our head with oil. Thy cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And we'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. For our family members, loved ones, friends, strangers, and enemies. The enemies keep us on our toes. Let us pray for those that hate us. Let's pray for those that despitefully use us. Let us love because you are loved, my Father. As you pour your love upon us, let us love, pour love upon one another. We can agree to disagree, but we must have love because you are love. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father God, we thank you for your long suffering, not easy, and anger traits that we all need. Thank you for your grace and mercy. If not for your grace and mercy, we would not be here. Though we know you may have grace upon whom you may have grace and compassion upon whom you have compassion. And we know you had to respect the persons that need to do we. Thank you for the stripes you took for us to have life. By your stripes we are healed. By your stripes we are made whole. By your stripes any and every infirmity. In any and every member of our body. It's gone right here, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we believe it and receive it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you because you are a keeper. 
We thank you for loving us, loving us when we could not love ourselves. Thank you, Father God, for loving us in spite of ourselves. Thank you, Father God, because you are a keeper. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us, and you are still here. And we say thank you, my Father. Thank you, Father God, and we love you because you first loved us, my Father. And we love you with an everlasting love, and we'll never forsake thee. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. We thank you, Father God, for your holy angels that encamp around us, that watch over us day and night, even while we work and play and while we at rest. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, for the remission of our sins, paid in full. But we know we need to work out our own salvation, and the internal and of the Most High, and we must study to show thyself approved. Thank you, Father God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, also known as the Comforter, that guides us to all truth. Father God, we thank you for your daily provisions. We thank you for your love, your outpouring of love. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, Father God, for all that you do have done and will do. We thank you, Father God, for our family members, loved ones, and friends. We thank you, Father God, for our beautiful brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. We thank you, Father God, for our neighbors, and we love our neighbors as we love ourselves in the community. We love all, Father God. We will not conform to the sin. We will not consent to the sin. But we love all. May we all come to Christ today. May we save souls to Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we repent for all our wrongdoing, past, present, and future transgressions. We are crucified our flesh. We don't live a life of sin, but we all have fallen short of the glory. Not one is good, not one but God. Please forgive us where we fall short, my Father. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, if we unknowingly open any doorways or entryways to evil, they are now closed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any evil curse, evil generational curse, evil covenant, witchcraft, spells, voodoo, that includes every form of witchcraft and any and every form of sorcery. They're all broken. They're all broken right here, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We all will take, we all will take it all, bind them, and cast them down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We say, go from which you came and do not come back in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even if it is the pits of hell, we proclaim Jesus Christ in you alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we plead the blood of Jesus over all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask may you please place a head of protection, not only a head of protection, a firewall of protection around all the listeners, all those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we ask may you please bless all the listeners, bless those in the body of Christ, all our family members, loved ones, and friends. Father God, only you know what we have need of. Is your will, your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know no weapons formed against us shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Father God, as we go through this day, help us to be a reflection of you in everything we do and what we say. Help us to guard our eyes, heart, mind, and soul at all times because evil is waiting to pass and even at the door. We're not letting them in, no. We want nothing to do with the evil one or anything connected to him. None whatsoever. Nothing. We're not giving him the time of day. Glory be to God. Hmm. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no matter where we be, at home, in a prayer closet, on the street, in a field, among neighbors, among friends, around family members, in, in the marketplace, in our place of employment. Let us all stand upright at all times. Let our light so shine before men. Let us show our good works and glorify our Father, which art in heaven. Hallelujah. And that includes in these marriages. Stand upright, husband and wives. Stand together in love. You are two are one flesh. The man leaves his father and his mother, and he cleaves to his wife. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Stand upright. Let us these marriages stand upright. Stop letting evil tell you what the world is doing. Who cares? This is what Father says. Not what the world is doing and what they say. Who cares? They make a divorce like seem like that's something real honorable. Shame on you for calling evil good and good evil. Marriage is honorable in the sight of the Lord. Marriage is honorable 
That's a holy covenant made between us and the Lord thy God. Husband and wife stand upright in that marriage. Have eyes for your spouse and me alone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Husband and wives do not defile your marriage bed at home or away from home in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Do not commit adultery against your spouse at home or away from home in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Be mindful when in judgment time. For you don't be caught creeping or sleeping in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And husband and wives, do not harm your holy temple. Harm yourself, harm your spouse, harm your children or your family in any way, shape, form, or fashion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And know those vows are sacred. Honor them as such. And as a holy covenant made between us and the Lord thy God, with, the, with God is put together, let no man pull asunder. Let no man put asunder. Children, children, all children, honor your father and your mother so things go well with you and your life is long lived on this earth. For all children are raised by another. This is another thing. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. A lot of children are being raised by grandparents, being raised by uncles, aunts, sisters, brothers, whatever the case may be. For all children that are raised by another, love the person or persons that raise you with the love of the Lord. Respect them. Respect yourself at all times. And honor your Father, which are in heaven, for blessing you with a person or person to raise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Too many children today are ungrateful, which the Lord said it would be. We are living our Bible prophecy. It, we are. We are. And really have unnatural affection for people. How can you go up to an elderly and knock them out? What is on your head to think you could do that? You, I mean... That is just unthinkable. Run up and punch the elderly and knock them out. Hit the head on a pole. Hit the head on a... I mean, on on a, the fire hydrant and just walk away. At, you look to see them fall down and you walk away. What is that? You have men that can kill their whole family and walk away. Then beat his wife to death with a bat. These are the days we living in. People, people are cold hearted. The hearts have waxed cold. You all better make sure that you have reverence for the Lord. And have love in your hearts. The love of God. Because if you don't. And you are not living for Christ. You're in trouble. You are in trouble. You better, better give your life to Christ. While you have the opportunity. Why is arms are stretched, outstretched? Father God loves you all. He don't have a, any ear to respect the persons. He loves us all. That's right. He loved you. That's why he gave his only begotten son. That's why he manifests himself in, in, a, in a begotten body. In the begotten body of Jesus Christ. So that you will have life. Not only have life, have it more abundantly. But you got to live holy. You got to give your life to Christ and live a life of holiness. Not just with your mouth. In your actions. What you say in it and what you do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. We can never say enough thank you. We're so very grateful and thankful. Let us be content where we are. And Father God, we know we can do nothing, absolutely nothing of our own, not even grief. It's all you, Father God. We say thank you, my Father. And we know your grace is sufficient for us all. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And it's not by my might, but by your strength that we are strengthened it, Lord Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, say we pray. Father God, we can never say enough thank you. We're so very grateful and thankful to you, for you. We're grateful for who you are to us, for us, and in us. We're grateful for any and everything that you do have done and will do. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We exalt you. God bless you, Father God. We praise thy holy name. You're worthy to be praised each and every day, all day. We glorify thy holy name. To God be all the honor, praise, and glory. We love you with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Every member of our body belong to you and only you, Father God. We say use this for your glory and your glory alone. Everything I do is for your glory and your glory alone, my Father. And you are greatly to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Your name is to be hallowed each and every day, all day, throughout the day. Glory be to God. And we love you, Father God, because you first loved us. And we love you with an everlasting love. And we'll never forsake thee. And we seal this prayer to you, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, with an holy kiss. And it's in the holy, precious, mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen and hallelujah.
Amen, amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us not stop there. What are you waiting for? If you haven't given your life to Christ, you have the opportunity to do so right here, right now. If you are ready to receive Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and Savior, then please say this prayer. Now, if you're not serious about your walk and you're not intending on um, serving him in sincerity and truth and seeking his face, don't bother, okay? But if you are serious about your walk and you're ready to receive him into your life to be your Lord and Savior, then please say this prayer. I pray to you, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I am sorry. And please forgive me for my sins against your word. I believe you are the only begotten Son of God. And you died for our sins, according to scriptures, and was buried, and rose again the third day. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I am saved and have a chance. An everlasting life. Help me to study your word. And obey it. And repent daily. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now please repent for your sins. That means you're going to turn from your wicked ways. You're going to strive for holiness and holiness only. And you are not to sin on purpose. And you ought to be baptized down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Congratulations and God bless you, my new brother and sister, and Lord the body of Christ. Congratulations in your walk with Christ. And remember this. It is not a religion. It's a personal relationship between you and the Lord thy God, a commitment and love. We in the body of Christ, we welcome you. Welcome my new brother and sister to the body of Christ. May we edify one another, pray with and pray for one another, pray without ceasing, fast, bear one another's burdens, Give love and charity because they cover a multitude of sin. Congratulations, my new brothers and sisters of the body of Christ. We love you, and Father God loves you more. God bless you. Teach and every one of us, and that includes myself, each and every one of us, please pick up your Bible, Father God's Word, and read it daily, preferably the King James Version. Read it daily because they got so many things out here that have been changing a lot of the books. Read your book daily. Read the Bible daily. It's God's word and you need to read it for yourself so you can hear from the Lord. If you go down on your knees in prayer and cry out to the Lord in sincerity and truth, he'll hear you and he'll answer you and he'll teach you the Bible himself. But you got to be seeking his face. You got to be sincere in your walk, striving for holiness. We don't have time to play games. We ain't living in the last days. Though no man know the day of the hour except the Father. We are living in the last days. 
That being said, I love you all. Young and soulless alike, and Father God loves you more. God bless you. We're not on our regular reading as yet? No. Today's lesson. Fear not, fear thou not, and be not afraid. Fear thou not, and be not afraid. And I'm going to give you two scriptures with that before we go into the scriptures for today. Fear thou not, and be not afraid. Okay? Fear not, and be not afraid. And that's, we're going to go with Deuteronomy 31, 6. Let's read that. Hallelujah. Be strong and have a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That means he's with you. He'll go with you. He'll always with you. And the other scripture, Isaiah 41, 10. Hallelujah. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea. I will help thee. Yea. I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. Hallelujah. And the scripture for today. The Father God has given me is Acts. Chapters 10 and 11. And we shall read them. Hallelujah. Acts chapters 10 and 11. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them, that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry, and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that called not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house, and stood before the gate, and called, and asked whether Simon, which were surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Then called he them in and lodged them. And on the morrow Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea and Cornelius waited for them 
and he called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of un another nation? But God hath shewed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for. I asked therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And, behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing, and said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call here the Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately, therefore, I sent to thee, and thou hast well done that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God, to hear all things that are commanded thee of God? Then Peter opened his mouth, and said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him, and worketh righteousness, is accepted with him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace, by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, I say, ye know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day, and shewed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people, and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water? that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Chapter 11. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him, saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised. And did his eat with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning, and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descend, as it had been a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came even to me, upon which when I had fastened mine eyes, I considered, and saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. And, behold, immediately there were three men already come unto the house, where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me, and the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. 
And he shewed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as on us at the beginning. There remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the light gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then had God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life? Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas, that he should go as far as Antioch, who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all, that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man, and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And there stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Amen? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I love you all with the love of the Lord and Father God loves you more. Please tell your loved ones that you love them. When I promise them all, not even the rest of the day, count your blessings. You are truly blessed. Father woke you up this morning. There are many that did not even open their eyes this morning. Count your blessings and give Father God honor, praise, and glory. And tell any and all that will hear you about Father God, who is Jesus Christ in the flesh. Father God is a Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit came down that begotten body. That same Holy Spirit dwells within you and I. If we seek him in sincerity and truth with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, you should hear from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Draw nigh unto God and he'll draw nigh unto you, meaning he'll draw close to you. You keep running from him, he may chase you a little, but eventually them, them arms are going, are going to go down. They're not going to be outstretched for so much longer. Okay? So if you deny him, he's going to deny you in front of his father. Glory be to God. And um, don't have problems with anyone. You mustn't have problems with anyone. Father God says, learn to live peaceable with all men. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And love the Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Please do those things. That's the requirement. The father requires that. We must strive for holiness. Without it, no man is going to see God or get into the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Tell any and all that will hear you. I don't have problems with anybody. you got to forgive them. I don't care who they are or what they've done to you. You must forgive them. I don't care if they hate you. I don't care if they despitefully use you. You better forgive them. Just as you want your father, you wish your father in heaven to forgive you for your sins and your transgressions. You must forgive your fellow man. No matter what he done or, or whom, he, whom he is or whatever he, has, he or she has done. Okay? I tell you this out of truth. I tell you because I love you. I tell you the truth. I love you all with the love of the Lord. And Father God loves you more. From youngest to oldest alike. God bless you. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Bye-bye.